What's up everyone, it's Kaisen here and welcome back to the series. Uh, as usual, this time we'll start with some items again. The first one is a headpiece and it gives us um, a bit increased armor, some life regeneration, um, a rarity roll that is relatively low, and a decent lightning roll. Um, there's life missing on the item, that's already bad. It's only one resistance, um, so overall the item is not that great. And on top of that, if we go back to our stash, we can see that here we have an item with a higher lightning resist roll and a higher rarity. So we'll definitely get rid of this one. Uh, the second one is a chest piece with intelligence, um, decent increased evasion and energy shield rolled. Um, and some chaos resist. The chaos resist is, is alright, 10% is okay, but there's nothing else on there. Again, we have no life, which for me, for most items, is uh, one of the most important roles, if your character is life based, that is. Um, and a second resistance would be really nice. So, you know, compared to what we have, it's it's way worse, so we're getting rid of this. And this one-hander, we have the percentage increased physical damage roll, but we're missing the flat fizz. And there's nothing else in terms of damage on it, so it's not good. So all of this can go. Um, on top of that, we got a level up, so we're 34 now. We can put this one in here, going further down towards Ondar's Guile. And what I want to do... Let's zoom out a bit. What I want to do is dismiss Katarina from the hideout um, because we can't do her missions right now. She's level 4 and you have to be in cruel difficulty already to do them. Uh, before I do this, because I tried to do her mission last time, um, her items reset, so that's a little trick you can use. Um, so we're just gonna check the items. It's nothing here but in terms of gems we have two gems that we have seen on enemies before but we haven't really had on on a vendor or you know we haven't seen the gem itself so freezing pulse we've actually seen in the last episode where um, the closer you get to the enemy the more damage you will deal it is a projectile attack so um, slower projectiles for example, actually slower is bad, um, faster projectiles works really well with it because it extends the the range of the attack. Um, and apart from dealing less damage, if you're further away, your chance to freeze an enemy is also um, decreased. We've seen Flame Blast and we've also seen Ball Lightning on enemies. Uh, We've seen it on Piety, for example, the the one fight that we had against her. And it's a slow-moving projectile, so slower projectiles with this would actually work really well. We were talking about this before. And periodically it damages enemies around it, so it shoots out lightning bolts. Um, yeah, not, not much more to say about this. Uh, because we have this... I don't think it's a bug. But basically what you can do you is, if you cannot do the daily, which I cannot right now, I can My still own. start it. And now you can see if I click on this, it tells me you have not completed normal difficulty, so I can't do it. And there's a command you can use, you can go slash abandon underscore daily, and then it resets, she comes back out. You wish to ask uh, something? It tells you that you already attempted the daily, which is fine because you can't do it anyway. But what you can do is uh, you can look at her items again because they were reset. So that's a little trick you can use. So everything unidentified, um, we know cold snap, discharge, 10% power siphon. Hmm. Let me check if this is uh, worth enough so we can actually buy it off the vendor.
I did check and it's mostly being sold for uh, one chaos so that means it is profitable to buy it here one alchemy is roughly half a chaos um, if you're unsure about um, certain ratios between currencies um, there's uh, some sites online that you that you can have a look at um, so yeah I'm definitely gonna buy this off the vendor and I'll try to resell it for a chaos just make some profit off of it okay so what we were initially trying to do is dismiss Katarina here yes and now we will go to act 3 and we will invite the new master that we found here we go uh, Verici Word has it he is already level 2 so we can check here but there's no no gems yet so it's not really interesting for us but we can invite him and we can do one of his missions right now I'm uh, just gonna another day in the land of plenty really quickly get rid of these we can you can see that we got some alchemy shards which was most likely due to the uh, chaos resist on those items Another day in the land of plenty. And now, oh, we we also get his tool, the artisan bench. Let's have a look at that. We can just hide out. Uh, let's put it here. Okay, so um, this one is interesting for uh, socketing any items and getting the right colors on those items. So you have a cost in jewelers um, to get a certain amount of sockets on an item. As you, he's only level two right now, as you level Verici, you get more and more options. So you can, probably at level three, you can go for three link, or a three socket, sorry. At four, four sockets. I think that's probably how it works. Um, so we already have two and three link here. Um, and we have to pay with fusings to do it. I, I'm not a hundred percent. I think these prices actually are um, relatively good in terms of how many f fusings, for example, you would otherwise need to get this particular link. So it it might really be worthwhile doing it. And same goes for uh, chromatics that we have to pay to get um, a certain amount of specific colored sockets. I think that actually works for every item. Yeah, yeah, there's no limitations here. So that's always good to know. Um, yes, okay, what is let's it? see what the daily is all about. And if it's something that we already did before, um, I'm just gonna make a cut here. You there, Let's see. A moment of uh, I'll probably show you guys what kind of uh, exile it is that I have to fight against. Kill though, this selfish just mother. to introduce a couple more exiles. Um, okay, assassinate him within the time limit. I'll come back when I found him. Okay, I found the exile. Since I do have a time limit, I can't really say too much about the exile while finding him or her, uh, because I have to kill him quick. Somewhere up here. Let's just get those guys out of the way. There's a, you can see a ruffian right here. That's one of the guys that comes with the exile. Oh, it's already started. Okay, what do we have here? Tora or Gosso? Um, huh, let's see what he does. I think he has Leap Slam, so he jumps towards you. Yes, he has Leap Slam. And uh, double strike. Is there anything else? Well, he got some charges, but I think that was mainly through the guys surrounding him. I think that's actually all he has. So he's mainly physically, uh, physical based. Um, yeah, not really hard. Um, well, his leap slam later on, uh, again, if your armor is low, deals a significant amount of damage. But that's about it. So make sure that you can kill him in the time limit. 
and that completes your mission. All right. So from this mission, yes, what is it? Uh, we got Marichi to level three. So only two missions were needed at this point in the game to get uh, a new master to level three. It's quite a bit quicker now. Um, I already, well, I had a look here and two of his unidentified items were chromatics for um, one transmute and one scroll of wisdom each. So I bought those two to just resell them to the vendor. In terms of gems, we have frostbite on here. We talked about this. Um, we've also seen freeze mine already. Um, we haven't talked about animate weapon, um, which is a pretty interesting skill. It requires um, weapons on the ground. So if you have and only melee weapons, you can't do it with with any ranged weapons like bows or, or wands. But if there's melee weapons lying on the ground, which could either be the case because you already killed a couple of monsters or because you had some in your inventory and you dropped them on the ground, those weapons um, will be animated and they will fight by your side. Um, they will be consumed though by using this skill. So if you have a good weapon and you drop it on the ground, it will fight for you for uh, level 137.5 seconds, but it will um, you will not get it back. It will be consumed through this spell. And you can also see that it limits the uh, item level or, well, the required stat on the item. So for example, well, I don't have an identified hero I can, oh, I can probably show it on this one. This one requires 23, so I would have to raise this skill um, probably two or three levels, I guess, until I can actually use a weapon like this and animate it. So it's it's a really interesting, uh, really interesting skill, and I've seen some builds that uh, made it work really well. All right, um, so that's dailies for Ready now, for I think. Hunt? Yeah, she's level four as well, so we can't really do it. What we can do as well before, uh, as we did before, we can go again with the abandoned daily yes. and just see if there's anything new on here. Ice shot and repost we talked about. I think that's a new one. Physical projectile attack damage is a support gem that is really good for any kind of projectile attack. Um, if you use a physical based weapon, which we will not, so this is not interesting for us. But if you would go um, physical spectral throw, then this is a really good uh, support gem for you because it it's just a flat increase for your uh, projectile damage, for your physical projectile damage. It decreases your speed a bit, but it's definitely worthwhile. So. Um, I would highly recommend this to, uh, yeah, to anyone who's going physical with a projectile attack. Okay, so that's it from here, and now we'll go back to the battlefront, and we'll make our way over here to the next area. I went back to the battlefront, and you can see up here we have the waypoint, and then we went down, the quest item was right here, and if you take a left here, you will always find the entrance to the next zone, the docks, right here. Um, just go along the water and you can't miss it. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry about the background noise um, for the last couple of minutes of the video. Not quite sure exactly what it was, but apparently it's gone again. So, yay! Alright, let's go into the docks. In this new zone, you should make sure that your fire resist as well as your cold resist are um, halfway decent, ideally maxed, um, if you have the right gear for it, which in my case is not even close. I have 19 cold, so um, I have to be careful in here. But uh, just to let you guys know, lightning resist in here is not really important. So, you know, the, the battlefront was basically only lightning and now it switches to cold and fire. 
this area um, always has a certain kind of layout. It's a, a stretch that basically goes down here, and then you have arms, um, kind of like, um, well, it is the docks. Oh, nice. We have Katarina in here. Um, so you have you have areas that go out where basically ships uh, could anchor. I can show you what I mean by that. So this is just you know the the regular area, and then if you go down, you will see something going outwards towards the side. Okay, now I have enough monsters around me. Let's get rid of them. And you can see we have some archers here, and they fire ice shots, that's why uh, your ice is uh, quite important. And actually I should say something about these Void Bears. Um, they have a fire attack, so that's why you need the fire. And what they use... Let's get rid of this guy. What they use is... Uh, what's it called? It's not Righteous Fire, but it's something that is uh, used often with Righteous Fire. Incinerate. There we go. I had to think a second there. Um, so these guys use Incinerate, and the thing about Incinerate is that it is, um, as you can see, it's like a constant attack. And the thing about it is that um, it has different stages. So if this guy starts attacking me, he deals relatively, almost no damage. But then it changes to stage 2 and then to stage 3, so he gains uh, attack power in a sense every single time. So the, the longer you stand in this, the more damage uh, it usually deals. So you have to be careful, um, especially with certain uh, blue void bearers. Alchemy, nice. Um, because they can have something like um, extra projectiles, which is really dangerous on them. Or any any type of additional damage is usually dangerous. Or faster attacks as well. So there's a lot of... R right now, I'm not too scared because my fire is halfway decent. I have... Yeah, 68% yeah, is actually really good. So I don't really have to worry about them. But in later difficulties... Um, there. And... We'll see it once we get there. Okay, so basically, that's what I meant. Here is uh, the normal area, and now we just we we go out on some sort of arm um, of this area, and there's a couple of those. And what you have to do in here is explore these um, outgoing arms and see. Um, there's two things that you want to find in this area. The first one is the waypoint. And the second one is the quest item in here. So I'll... yeah, this might actually already be... yep. This is Fairgraves. Um, you can talk to him, you don't have to. He will give you a quest. Um, and actually, part of the quest is uh, in an area that we already went through. So we have to go back to this area at some point, and this is the waypoint. So this is the first thing that you want to find. Now, the second is the quest item, and uh, I'll uh, cut you guys back in when I find it. Alright, I found a couple of things before I got there. This guy here, the Revenant, he's the area boss, and you can see that he uses this swirling attack, which is called uh, Cyclone. So, he basically deals damage to you while, you know, he can go through you basically in deal damage while doing that. He also uses totems, and uh, if you stand in here, you take damage. Um, I'm not 100% sure what kind of damage this is. It might be cold. Nah, it makes sense that it's fire damage, but don't quote me on that. Um, you can easily find um, a description on the wiki. It will just tell you what kind of damage it is. Um, and, you know, the uh, usual incinerate with the fire damage as well. So that's that's basically what he does. 
he is he deals more damage than the rest of them especially if he worlds behind you and you stand in here you can see that my health is going down I take quite a bit of damage so the combination of his uh, skills uh, might be dangerous but usually it's it's pretty easy you just either you kill the totem real quick or you just go somewhere else and wait for him to follow you um, especially if you have a ranged attack you know you don't have to worry about anything and he's gone um, and I found a diamond ring I'm not sure if we've seen a diamond ring before um, it basically is a critical strike chance that you can have on rings this is especially interesting if you're going for um, a build that is based around uh, critical strike chance and um, critting as as much as possible I'm just gonna pick all of this up um, and another thing that I found is this here we found a corrupted area this time it's a stagnant cano and it has shocking ground so that's dangerous we have to be careful where we stand we've seen that before though so we know how to deal with that um, it contains two unique bosses um, which can be really easy or really hard depending on the boss in stagnant cano the boss that we see is a snake and the snake um, can multiply so this might actually be dangerous um, because you can easily get surrounded by all the uh, mirror images of the snake and if it's two bosses um, we have to be careful so ideally you want to draw one of them and then uh, kill one off <clears throat> and then draw the other one uh, on top of that uh, the boss has um, what's it called uh, bleed so we it's hard for us to run away if we get surrounded so we might actually have to escape um, so you know your your last resort is always escape exit to whatever usually character selection we might have to do that but we'll see um, all right let's go in actually there's one little thing uh, that I want to show you guys before we do this because I am level 34 right now and I might not be I might level up um, in the in the corrupted zone so I want to show you guys that and with level 34 um, that's when you should start checking the vendors and by vendors I mean especially um, act 3 normal and everything that is above act 3 normal because as you can see we can get five sockets on an item now um, and that's very interesting because we can potentially get a five socketed and already five linked item on a vendor which is worth something so uh, you should always check your vendors um, and see if you have something interesting on there you know this was close um, but we have the chromatic link here so we can definitely buy this there was one here as well but it it costs two all uh, transmutation uh, I don't know I usually don't buy it for two I think one is is my cutoff so you know you can you can check all of it and see if there's something else but it looks like there's only one on here so we can just resell this straight away okay so basically from this level on you should do this and maybe you get lucky and get your five link okay we are in the corrupted zone you can see that there's um, colossal wall fall in here just a big version of the smaller wall fall um, they hit a bit harder it's the same as uh, you know the the usual size skeleton and the colossal skeletons or the bone stalkers what they're called um, it's not much more to say about this zone that's that's basically we have some buccaneers in here as well but we've seen all of them um, I'm going towards the end uh, there's actually something here that might be interesting uh, we have apparently we have a uh, a tormented soul and we also have a unique here oh no it's just a tormented soul okay I thought there was a unique then uh, let's just try to kill this guy whoa okay maybe not these guys hit really hard okay I know this is softcore but um, I'm planning on dying as little as possible 
throughout the entire series. I haven't died yet, and I'm, I'm planning on, you know, keeping it that way. Um, we still got some some nice drops, so that's cool. Um, I think we've seen some skeletons. If not, um, it's the same as Raised Zombie, just with skeletons. And skeletons uh, are... They do more damage than zombies, but they don't have as much HP, so that's the main difference. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we've seen this one. You just gain an endurance charge uh, every time you get stunned. Or, no, I think it's every time you stun. Gain endurance charge if you stun. Yeah. So that's for a melee character. Um, and, and by the way, um, if you have never done this zone before, uh, you... Oh, Artisan. Nice. You know that you're towards the end of the zone. If you hear a certain noise, um, we'll roll this at the end. I actually want to get through this zone. Okay, we made it to the end. Now, the tricky part here is we don't want to aggro both of them at once. There should be a, a magic, yeah, some magic monsters there as well. So we just want to draw them out. Um, because if, if you aggro both of them, um, I can pretty much assure you that you will get easily surrounded and if you start bleeding. Okay, the first one apparently is here. Yeah, that's him. Okay, whoa. Okay. We want to consistently deal damage. Here we go. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Uh, that's good. The first one never really got the chance to multiply because it takes them um, a bit of time before they can do it. Oh, that's the second one. Okay. Now you can see that. I'm just gonna throw them all around me. We are surrounded. And there's one that is the main one. This is the main one. So we want to kill this. And then the others still survive, but you can kill them off one by one. So that was definitely not as tragic as I thought. But if there are too many of these mirror images, uh, and you get surrounded, and maybe they put bleed on you, um, it can get pretty dangerous. Alright, so... We got a lot of good loot here, and we have the vessel over here. I don't think there's any monsters left, so let's have a look at what we get. Vol Lightning Warp. Let's have a look at that. Casts a delayed de teleport for nearby enemies to a target destination. Oh, interesting. Usually, Lightning Warp teleports your character and this ball gem teleports enemies um, it doesn't really say how many I think it has to do with um, the area let's see I'm kind of I'm really curious about this actually mm, let's put it here for now can I Oh, I need enemies, apparently. What is this? Oh, I have to load it first, anyway. Yeah. So, obviously, you have to kill some stuff first. You need the souls to activate it. Same with uh, every vol skill. And, uh, yeah, then I think it has to do with the area of effect. So, within its area of effect, every enemy is teleported, and you deal lightning damage to them twice. Alright, so this was the Corrupted Zone. The... The snake that we saw at the end um, is, doesn't really do that much. It's just a puncture, so you start bleeding and it multiplies. But we didn't really see too much about this. Oh, and there's there's actually smoke mine as well. So you saw that when the snake um, when the snake multiplied, um, there was some some sort of smoke coming out. And that was smoke mine, um, which just means that it, it kind of uh, teleports from one place to the next with with all its mirror images. All right, the last thing in here is the strong box. I brought some currency with me, and we will transmute it first. Detonates nearby corpses. That's the um, the the bad part. So we use our augment and see what we get on top of this increased quantity. Um, 
I know I used a an alteration last time, but I don't think it's worthwhile on an artisan, um, just because artisan doesn't really it doesn't really give you that much. Um, there's way more important ones, so we're just gonna save our currency for now, and we'll open it as is. Oh, okay. Get away. We have some archers using puncture here again. Oh, okay, and now exploded. it exploded the corpses. So even if you killed some of them, you have to be careful um, not to run over too many corpses because you will have this corpse explosion once um, from the chest or from the strong box. That should be the last one, yep. And we'll just get a tiny amount of scraps and whetstones. Back in the docks, um, you can see that I ran into some dead ends already, but at some point you will find this uh, exclamation mark where uh, there's a container and with it you will always find um, a magic pack. In this case, not a problem for me. And once you click on the container, you will get your thematic self find. So this is the second one that you need, and this is basically all you have to do in this area. So at this point, you can basically exit to character selection and go back into uh, into town, um, sell your stuff, and once you're ready, you will go back to the battlefront. Um, I'll check the time and see if we have enough time to do the next area.